Hello and welcome to the video. In this video, I'd like to take a first look at this thing here. Now, this is a relatively new thing, so I need to say a big thank you to Fact Shark for getting me one of these units out to have a play with. So this isn't the final shipped version. Mine didn't come with a box. It just came with the top to keep everything safe. So what I want to do in this video is, first of all, talk about what you get in the box, talk about the individual pieces, give you a couple of tips and tricks if you're going to get one of these, and show you what it's like actually flying. And then finally, talk about the kit at the end. End. So this is the Fat Shark 101 and it's really designed for those pilots who are looking to get into FPV and just want to buy all the bits in one go and they're guaranteed to kind of work together and the great thing about Fat Shark is these guys have pretty spectacular warranty. If any of you have owned Fat Shark goggles and had problems with them even when they've been out of warranty most of the time Fat Shark will even take care of them and fix them for you without charge. So the backup for a kit like this is really important and I guess that's why this will appeal to some people rather than others. But in here we get the quadcopter, the goggles, we get the radio, we get the majority of the batteries that we need, we can get the charging cables and we even get some extra pieces too to help those who are interested in FPV or quadcopters actually learn to fly. So let's not mess about, let's get stuck in and let me show you what's in the box. I've put everything back in the box because I've been flying the heck out of this over the past couple of days because it's been pretty good fun. Now, the first thing you get is your sticker sheet. Uh, you also get a manual. I've put a couple of images up here on the screen. There wasn't a manual in this one. Again, it wasn't the final retail packaging that when I got mine. But the manual is very good and isn't particularly complicated, so it doesn't overwhelm you. Uh, but there's enough in there to get flying without too much problem at all. The main event is the quadcopter. So uh, let's take a closer look at each of these pieces in a minute. But you'll immediately notice it's a little bit of an unusual beastie. Uh, I haven't got the lens cap on mine at the moment because I've been flying it a lot, but it does come with a little lens cap. You've got little brush motors, there's a little battery at the bottom, and all of the antennas are actually integrated. So this is a little quad, but it's FPV ready. Then we have a couple of other cool things. These, when I first saw them, I wonder what the heck they were. But they're actually race gates. So they open up to quite a big size. A big hoop and you can pop these or dangle these from somewhere in the garden if you want to practice your race racing and your flying and your maneuvers putting them together is very similar to if you've ever been uh, had any photography gear and you've had those reflector light kind of reflectors same deal you get two of those then we have a little radio uh, this only has a limited set of buttons it's not going to overwhelm you we'll come back and have a look at that in a second we have two batteries for the quad. Uh, mine's already got one on there. This is the second one, a little 2S LiPo battery. Then you have the recon goggles. Now, these are definitely worthwhile having a look at. These recon goggles you can't buy separately. These are available for uh, OEMs to bundle with their kit, but we'll talk about those too. And then finally, you get some extra bits at the bottom. You get an antenna for the goggles. And it's a linear antenna on the quadcopter, so that's entirely appropriate. You get a cable to charge the battery in the goggles. Yep, rechargeable battery in there, which is really nice. You get a cloth to get rid of all the smudgy fingerprints. You get a spare set of props and some spare motors as well. And then finally, you get the charger for the LiPo batteries. So now we've had a quick look. Let me just get the box out of the way. And let me talk about a couple of things that aren't actually in the box. So there's a couple of things as well that come in the box that I haven't got here. The first is that you get the download to the DRL simulator and the USB cable that you can charge the goggles with is also fits into the bottom here. So you can use this plugged into your computer to also practice on DRL. And it also comes with a three month free membership to the Academy of Motor Aeronautics for free insurance after you register. So there are a couple of extra things in here and you can tell it's really designed to help those people who just want to get in the hobby and have everything and it just all work. Fat Shark are also going to be putting up a number of tutorial videos to help you fly. Now the manual itself is full of lots of little tips giving you ideas of how you uh, get into the air and progress safely without breaking everything. And the initial version of the battery 
container here that you get as part of the kit has a tether on it. So the idea is you could tether that to something like a bottle full of water. So it means that your quadcopter won't fly away and you can practice your hovering. But the tutorial videos that Fat Shark are going to put up shortly, so you've got lots of grass on mine. Apologies, I tried to get it all off before I started recording, um, but it has had quite a few tumbles and um, I'm pleased to report it has shrugged every single one of them off. I was a bit worried about this thing at the back getting snapped off, but it's absolutely fine. So let's look at each of these pieces individually. So the quadcopter itself, uh, I don't know if you can see here, if I try and get it in the light so it'll reflect, maybe. Let's just see if I can do it. Hopefully you can kind of see it looks like there's an antenna built into the fin on the shark and there's potentially another one. Let's see if I can get it to reflect here at the back as well for uh, the receiver. The camera is very, very small indeed, but works really nicely. I'll show you some footage of that on the go in a minute. Brush motors with removable prop guards. Uh, the prop guards just kind of clip into place and that's handy because I have managed to unlock one in, uh, in a little bit of a crash, but they just snap into place. And then you've got the little props on the top, color coded so you can't get them the wrong way round. The battery itself, the way it connects is via this little 2S balance tap. So once you plug that in, the thing is live and to replace the battery is pretty straightforward. There are two little clips. Hopefully you can see that on the camera that you just press together. The battery then just lifts off and it's a 7.6 volt, 260 milliamp hour, uh, 35C pack. And uh, hopefully you can see there, it's reasonably sturdy little fella. Oh, the weight on this thing is about 69 grams with a battery. And there are only two controls on this thing. One is the channel on the side. Uh, this will either support the fat shark bands or race bands. Uh, brief press, there's a little button behind that uh, writing there on the quad. Brief press will change the channel, long press will change the band. There's a little flashing LED that will tell you which one is which. There's a bind button here to bind it to the radio, but you don't need to worry about that if you've bought the kit because it's already bound to the radio and it's ready to rock and roll. Flight time out of one of these batteries, I'm getting about four, four and a half minutes with the way I'm flying, but it will really depend on how aggressively you fly, how long the battery is going to last. But the nice thing is there's at least two, so you can have one in charge while you're flying the other one. Next thing to talk about then is the radio. The radio, uh, the gimbals on it aren't bad at all. They feel quite nice. You only have one button to turn it on and off. If you press and hold it, it turns it on. You turn it on first and then turn the quad on separately and it will bind up. And then you have a couple of switches on it. This one here, when the switch is in the downward position, it'll start and stop the motors. So that's essentially the arming switch. Uh, it talks in the manual about making sure that you know where that is. I'd absolutely recommend if you've never flown before, that is a really important switch. If you start to have a crash, you flick that straight away and that will make sure that none of the, uh, the props are striking anything or getting stuck or motors are getting burnt or anything. The other switch here is for the three flight modes. In the up position, it's very docile and easy to fly, inspires tons of confidence. It's kind of like angle level, I guess, on regular flight controllers. The middle position gives you rate mode, but the RC rates are relatively low, so it, you can't get into too much trouble. Uh, and then in the lowest position, it's the same rate mode, but the RC rates are much higher. So it will flip and roll much, much quicker. And I found that flying in the angle mode or the uh, self-level mode is absolutely brilliant for new pilots. I could just poodle around that all day. And then for me, uh, the bottom position was actually pretty nice. And I'll show you some footage of flying in a minute and show you some flips and rolls in those three modes. It runs on AA batteries. So uh, you're going to have to get a couple of those to pop them in. Mine came with the batteries installed, but I'm not sure in the actual kit. Uh, but that's pretty much the radio. Not sure what protocol. I've heard it might be Fly Sky, but I have no idea. But it might be one of those things that we play with in a later video to see how that all works. And then we come on to these recon goggles. Now these have been all over Instagram and social media, so I'm really interested to get my hands on them. Uh, started to see this new Fat Shark logo a lot. Just get the so you get the sticker sheet so you can put your stickers on everything else as well. Um, I kind of like the new logo. I must admit, I spent a very long time looking at that 
green shark. There's a charging port here on the side for that USB cable. When it's charging, the little light's on green. It's actually powered by a little lithium ion 18650 battery. Uh, so there it is inside. Uh, again, it all charges automatically. It comes with a little protector at the side that you pull out, and then that connects the battery. To power it on and off, you only have one little switch here at the bottom. If you slide it across, it will beep, and then they will come on. So hopefully you kind of see the screen there. So it's one single screen. Let me just see if I can kind of get it so you can kind of see what's going on. In fact, I'll tell you what, let me just power up the quad. But hopefully, here we go, you can kind of see that the image is uh, nice and clear. And at the top, we have information about the, the channel that we're looking through and also gives us some nice information about RSSI as well. So that's really useful and very handy. Now, the nice thing about this, uh, that is quite nice at night when it's flying. You have the flashing eyes at the front. Um, well, we've got it running. Let's just quickly arm the motors. If it doesn't arm, probably means your throttle isn't in the lowest position. And then to take off, you just increase the power. And then to turn the motors off, you just flick it again lovely and quiet actually in operation so you could fly it uh, in your back garden away from everybody without getting into too much trouble so we'll just turn those off uh, the fit on them is pretty nice i found that they are reasonably comfortable the only thing with me is that this uh, this curve is a little bit aggressive for me so these parts of the pads are pushing into my uh, face a little bit but i'm finding that as i wear them more they're kind of releasing a little bit and it's getting a little bit more comfortable. The nose cutout is nice and clear, so I don't have an issue with that. And the screen's relatively easy to focus on. I'm not having too many problems with steam up. There are these vents at the side, uh, hopefully to try and keep it airflow. There isn't a fan in here, so make sure that the goggles are nice and warm if you're going to be flying in colder weather, because you might better get a bit of condensation. The only controls here are for these buttons, control the channels, the up and down selection will take you through them. This little joystick here, if you press the middle bit, it will do like an auto scan to find the strongest signal. So if you're not sure what the channel is on your little quadcopter, if you just press the middle button on that, you'll find it. And then you've got brightness and contrast by moving up, down, left and right. But these are pretty basic goggles, but they work really, really well. So what's it like to fly? Well, not surprisingly, it feels like Fat Shark has put a little bit of time and effort into this to try and make it as easy to fly as possible. There are no trims on the radio, so all the calibration seems to happen inside the model itself. So once you've plugged in the battery, as soon as you've plugged it in, pop it down somewhere level and just let it sit for a second before you take off. If you find that you take off and there is a little bit of drift, then probably what you've done is not sat it level and let the, everything calibrate before you took off. In kind of the self-level beginner mode, it is a piece of cake to fly. It is very, very forgiving and behaves like a much larger quadcopter. So they've obviously got lots of expo dialed in here as well to make it very easy to fly for the new pilot. The middle position with the flips and rolls is more fun. It allows you to fly faster and to get more extreme angles and even flip and roll. The flip and roll rates though are not particularly quick, so don't try and do it anywhere near the ground. And then in the kind of expert mode, with the mode switch towards you, that is where this little thing really comes alive and you can absolutely hoot around. And hopefully you can see in the video how well that little camera is coping. The camera was one of the biggest surprises on this. It's actually working really, really well. The dynamic range, the color saturation is great. And the really cute trick about the FPV is the image will desaturate. It will go to black and white when it's time to land. I think the last comment here is this isn't the first time that Fat Shark has tried to make it easy for people to enter the hobby, particularly around FPV. They've bundled their goggles with cameras and transmitters for a long time. In fact, my first ever set of Fat Sharks I still have here, I won't part with them for sentimental reasons, are Predator V2s. They came with a little Fat Shark immersion RC transmitter and a camera and everything was in the kit so you could put the camera on a plane, boat, car, whatever you wanted and then you could use the goggles to experience FPV for the first time. Now that was more expensive than other bits of kit, but I didn't want to take any risks and I wanted to make sure that everything I bought would work together. And if it didn't work together, I had the backup of going back to the vendor and getting it sorted out. 
And this is kind of the modern super duper version of that, where everything in this kit works and works really well and works really well together. And it also is going to be nice as you move up, as you progress in the hobby, these kind of goggles won't be things that you're ever going to throw away. These would make excellent ride-along goggles or to pass on to another member of the family if you're flying FPV so they can see what's happening too. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that have seen this just come out. Now you know what's in the package and now you know some of the tips and tricks to set it up and what all the buttons do too. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.